Josh, the, the final score didn't seem to really reflect the way that this game was played throughout most of the night. Um, how did you feel like you guys were able to kind of hang in and just hope, hope that the game would sort of turn in your direction uh, by hanging in there as long as you could against a team that's obviously really high caliber? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought we did that. I thought, you know, we there was multiple times where they could have blown the game open to 20 points in that first half, uh, third quarter. I thought we did a good job of kind of keeping it within striking distance, you know, 10 points at three-quarter time, and we gave ourselves a chance to get back in the game, but um, they got up to an 8-0, 10-0 start to start the fourth, and from then on, we were playing from behind, and we're too far back at that point. But um, I thought we, we stuck with it for three quarters, but the start of the fourth just kind of, they, they blew the game open. Seemed like when you were out there, you were able to generate some good advantages and kind of get that blender going. Mark was saying, like, the offense and you have both taken nice steps forward over the course of time, and um, that defense is obviously a very difficult one to, to go up against. Where do you think that, that that evolution has continued to go to to allow you guys to be able to crack a defense like that the way that you were able to at some points tonight? Yeah, I think it's just seeing different looks from different teams and um, you know, that's a good defense. They can switch one through five. They've got a lot of you know, point of attack defenders and um, they do a good job keeping the ball in front. They're really good in weak side help. You know, Pozingas protects the rim for them. So uh, they're good defensively. Um, but I mean, we, we just, I thought early on we, we held the ball too long. Um, guys were trying to play ISO ball against a loaded defense, which is hard to do against a team like that. And um, it just wasn't going to work. It wasn't sustainable for, for the game. And uh, once we got out of it, started moving the ball, we looked good. But um, we just we just didn't get to that enough tonight. And um, it, you can't win against a team like that trying to play, you know, one on one. Josh, obviously, a, a uphill battle uh, offensively without maybe some of the best scorers, creators. I just wonder. Um, during the stretch without Dell to say, like what's stood out to you about the half court offense? What might translate when they come back or what might, you know, be tossed out the window as soon as they come back? Um, I mean obviously they lead two, you know, pretty big holes both sides of the ball. Um, but I think, you know, it just it gives opportunity for other guys to step in and um I mean I, we, we don't try to change the way we play. I mean, um just because two guys are out, obviously they're very important to what we're doing, but uh our offense is defensive um, structure and rules are the same. Uh, we, we try to stick to them as best we can, and um, other guys have got to step up and um, you know try fill the shoes as much as we can because they are two important pieces. And um, you know, but I don't think we, we need to change the way we play. Essentially, uh, if we continue to move the ball and get good looks, I think we've got a talented enough team to compete with anybody in the league. And, and so, I guess what I'm really asking is how much of you know maybe the struggle you can just chalk up to them being so and, and what might last during the stretch that, you know, Mark mentioned that he likes some of the wrinkles you guys are seeing. Like, what might last in that? Um, I mean, I, like, I don't know. I mean, it's not an excuse that they're not here, that we, you know, it's, we lost a game, oh, well, we didn't have Shea and Dub. Like, we'll move on to the next. Like, we've got enough talent in this team, uh, we, you know, even missing a few guys to compete with anybody. And um, we've got full confidence in, in everyone on the roster. And, um, you know, we obviously played two really good teams without those guys. Um, and I thought Philly, we gave ourselves every chance to win that game and we came up, you know, one, two points short. And um, tonight, obviously, it was a different story. But, um, yeah, I mean, they've only been out two games, so it's hard to really get a feel for what's going to change or what's not going to change. But um, they're also two, you know, big pieces to what we do. And then just the, the way Chris Stapps hunts, you know, cross matches, everything he does, everything, you know, they do to kind of design the way he gets going. Like, what, what's so troubling about that? And what do you see from him? Yeah, he, he's a... Tough matchup. I mean, he's big. He can shoot the ball. Um, they're really good at, you know, picking on matchups and getting guys on him that he wants. And uh, once he gets the ball in that mid range, he's he's very tough to guard one on one. He's seven three. Shoots over the top of you. He's really good at, you know, rip through fouls. So um, he he is a tough cover. And um, I thought tonight he kind of got to his spots and we made it. Uh, well, we try to make it tough, but um, against a guy like that, it's 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 got to be a, you know a lot better. What do you like about your game right now with the season one against it? What's um, working for you? I mean, just playing with more confidence, I think. Um, trying to make plays, do the right thing. I think not coming into a game with you know a preconceived notion of what I'm going to do, just letting the game tell me how to play. And um, I thought early on I didn't do that, but um, I, I've tried to, you know, since the All-Star break, I guess, um, tried to kind of make that an emphasis coming into each game, take it as it comes. and. Um, let the game dictate what, what happens. Are you trying to do more knowing that Shea and Jalen are out? I mean, not really. I, I mean, the ball's going to be in my hands a little bit more maybe, but um, I don't try and be Shea or try and be Dub. Um, I just 
on, on me. I try to play the way I play and, um, you know, make guys around me better. As a guy who's a really good passer, I wanted to get your perspective on Kaysen's night. He had a, a really good pass inside to Lou. I, I forgot, I think it was in the first half. And then he finished with five assists. That's a career high for him. Just what have you seen in terms of his growth as a, as a playmaker out there? He's been great. I mean, he's been consistent all year, um, offensively, defensively. He, You know, especially defensively, he, I think he's been awesome. Um, but offensively, obviously, as I said, with a couple guys out, um, he, he's going to have the balling chance a little bit more. And he did tonight, and he made plays. He, he you know, scored. He, he got other guys' looks. So... Um, he's going to continue to grow, and the more he you know, gets a feel for the game, and um, that's a very good defense that did that against tonight. So um, speaks to his talent. He's a hard worker, and he's going to continue to you know, get better in the league. Within five points, kind of midway through that third quarter, what was working for you guys kind of to get it to that point, and then what did you feel like switched after that? Sorry. <laughs> um. You know, it started on the defensive end, was getting stops and uh, rebounds, and then playing out in transition, getting some easy looks going where we could find find a rhythm, um, and we just weren't able to sustain that for the rest of the game. And, uh, Kaysen, I wanted to ask you, you had five assists tonight. That's a career high for you. Just what were you seeing out there? What were you? What was kind of your mindset coming into this game when you're going to be in the starting lineup tonight? Um, just being aggressive. You know, I touched the paint a lot more than I have in the uh, – previous games, so just touching the paint and finding sprays, finding open guys on the wing. Chair, sorry, cut me. Chet, obviously a, a two game sample sign, so not a lot to go on, but just without Doug, without Shea, you're getting maybe more, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one opportunities maybe at the end of the clock or just advantages you guys need to create because they're not there. Just. How hard has that been in these two games, just without them? Just how have you maybe navigated that? Um, I mean, I'd say the biggest thing is just um, kind of the situation of, you know, back-to-back -back road games, um, not having any practice time to kind of, uh, you know, plan for obviously um, having Shea and Dub uh, missing. Um, you know, we had a pretty consistent season of uh, what we were going to, what we were, uh, what looks we were going to have every night. And, uh, you know, now that's different. So now we're kind of figuring out a new thing. And, um, you know, we have, you know, guys in the locker room that um, are going to work extremely hard, including myself, to, you know, figure that out as soon as possible. Um, and, you know, that's kind of what we're looking at. You guys have been one of the more healthy teams throughout the league, I mean, now in recent weeks. You know, Dub is maybe dealing with some ankle stuff. Shea, obviously, has a fall thing. Just how much are you reflecting maybe on, you know, the kind of injury luck, I guess, you guys had to start the season? And just how are you navigating now? It's just it's the stretch now. But, I mean, you guys don't have that injury bug necessarily, but it's, it's different than what it was. Uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's luck. Uh, you know, we got guys who really take care of their bodies and do everything necessary to give themselves the best chance of um, being healthy as long as possible. and. You know, credit to our medical staff as well for helping with that. But, uh, you know, sometimes you can't control injuries, contact injuries, getting kneed in the quad, stepping on somebody's foot here or there. Um, and, you know, we just got to adjust and, and play through them, and that's what we plan to do. I just want to ask you about the, the first three quarters really being able to not let them blow the lid off of things. What's that like against a team that's obviously of that caliber, that experience level, of being able to just kind of keep it in check against them, uh, given the talent that they have. You want that one? You got it. Um, uh, you know, it's a league with a lot of talent, and, uh, you know, that includes their team. Uh, you know, they got a lot of experience playing together, too. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, you just want to give yourself a chance uh, to win basketball games, and we try to give our chan ourselves a chance for as long as possible. And, uh, you know, credit to them. They, uh, you know, put together the plays that they needed at the end to, um, you know, kind of blow the lead open, and that's what they did. And, uh, you know, we just got to come back and get better for next year. And then I saw this earlier and just thought it was kind of fascinating. You, you guys have 2,000 points combined between the two of you uh, as rookies this season. Celtics, they have nine points from rookies all season. When you go against a, a team with so much experience, uh, how do you maintain the perspective that you guys have? have had all year, which is to not really uh, be phased by who's necessarily across the floor from you. Um, 
to me, at the end of the day, we're all on the court for a reason. We're all good basketball players. So um, I feel like we, we bring a lot to the table, to the team, you know. And it doesn't matter who we're going against. We're going to compete at a high level. So um, it's all about the compete. The game within five points midway through the, the third quarter. What did you feel like was working for you guys up to, to get to that point? And then what did you feel like changed after that? Yeah, we were down, I think, 14 at halftime and uh, did a really good job coming out of the half of stabilizing the game, giving ourselves a chance, uh, and kept it there pretty much throughout the third. Uh, and then, obviously, they opened it up in the fourth. But I liked our response out of the half. We were able to make a couple adjustments to how we were playing uh, to make ourselves more effective and harder to play against uh, and had a really good third uh, after you know hanging in there a little bit in the first half. Obviously, it wasn't enough tonight, but... You know, I, I like the fight out of halftime. Kaysen had a really good just kind of two-in performance with his five assists, but also four steals. What did you see from him tonight? Yeah, good activity on the defensive end. I mean, he isn't the tallest guy, but he offsets it with great athleticism, great hands, great instincts. I thought, you know, that he showed that tonight. And then offensively just continues to grow in confidence. You know, it's one of the benefits of the circumstance we're in is it allows guys to stretch a little bit, see what they're capable of. Uh, and I thought he showed some of that tonight. You I think you touched on this before the game, but just the chances that you're getting right now to see this team have to generate offense and generate stuff without two primary playmakers. Yep. What have you made of 30 assists last night and you get you know, multiple guys, I think five, six guys in the double figures again tonight? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, obviously we'd rather be at full strength always, but um, every there's an opportunity in every game. And the opportunity right now is to, you know, stretch the minutes of some guys and get them, you know, significant run, uh, and also see guys in different roles and stretch their roles a little bit. Like I said before the game, there's going to be circumstances, you know, down the stretch of the season into the playoffs um, and moving forward where teams really try to take out, um, you know, our, our guys that are our main creators, our highest usage players, and it's going to force, you know, other guys to be aggressive and to be confident in these types of games help them to kind of build that muscle. You guys were able to kind of hold them in check for good portions of this game, but it just seems like they have this explosive button, and you know Brown didn't have anything going, and then suddenly yeah. burst. What is it like trying to just keep the lid on things for as long as possible as you possibly can? I thought you know, given the fact that we didn't shoot the ball particularly well, you know, we were able to keep the game you know in a in a decent spot for a long time on a night where we didn't shoot it great, you know, which is all you can really ask for. It's like you just want to hang around long enough to let the game turn potentially. I thought that's what happened in New York. You know, it was a similar circumstance where they had a big third. You know, we kept it in a manageable spot, and then we get a little flurry in the fourth, and next thing you know, we have the lead. You know, but if you're down by 20, you can't do that. So um, I thought we did that well tonight, and we just never got the flurry, you know. But, um, you know, we, the, it, the end score didn't reflect uh, our competitiveness in that one. Without, without yep. It feels like so much of what's worked this season is obviously either having, you know, two of the three of, you know, Doug, Shea, Chet. With, with as many games as you have left, are you maybe worried with the, without those two out on the timeline? Are you maybe worried that you might command too much or, or stretch the, the guys that are left maybe too thin? No, definitely not. You know, I think um, nobody's minutes have been crazy. You know, we're trying to spread that out in a, in a, you know, pretty, it's not like we're playing eight guys because they're out. You know, we're staying with 10 or 11 and, you know, spreading the minutes out pretty good. We're not going to put anybody in a situation um, that they are overworked or anything like that. And then we're going to have a week after the season ends, you know, which is going to help everybody recharge. So, you know, it's actually a good opportunity for us to get guys minutes that haven't played these types of minutes. So I guess I'd follow that up by asking, do you feel like the stretch just play style-wise, what you guys have to do, I mean, I know this Yep. Uh, do you feel like, you know, with the with the lack of creation that, that comes with not having fair dub, does it feel like you're asking too much of the guys that that are there in terms of what they can offer? Um, no, we're not asking too much of anybody. It's just we have to work together for advantages on a lot of plays. Uh, and when we do that, we can generate them. But, um, you know, there's times where Shea's got the ball and they just double him, and the advantage is created by the defense. You know, like that's not happening right now, so we have to work together uh, to create them. And on a lot of possessions we have, you know, we've done that um, certainly last night on a ton of possessions to gain control of that game. We did it a lot of times tonight, um, 
and that's that's the way you got to do it. Yeah, and you know, obviously you talked about the other just kind of the assignments, some of the assignments you take over, or maybe wackier than others, maybe you run a seven footer. Yep. Um, with tonight, with the, the way Chris has played, I just wonder how different would that have looked with with Dub on the floor? Like, what would that have looked like? Yeah, I mean, there's a reason we play those guys 30, 35 minutes every night. You know, they're obviously very effective. Um, and so when you take that out, you know, it's it's we're not going to be as good of a team um, in terms of our ceiling. But you know, I thought, you know, tonight they did, they attacked a ton of switches. You know, they're they're choosing their matchup. They knew we were switching him. Um, so I'm not sure that they would have chosen Dub if he was out there. You know, what I mean, they would have continued to choose the guys they were choosing, and so yeah, it would have helped to have him. But again, these are good opportunities for us to learn our team. It's good opportunities for our guys to stretch themselves. Um, there are benefits to this circumstance that we can draw. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Uh, maybe he wasn't trying to disrupt the flow of the game, but there were times where he had to go one on one with, with Chris Epps. It felt like just during the stretch without those guys. Like what have you seen from him in terms of maybe trying to create for himself and just that that process in itself? Yeah, I mean, on the plays where he has to, it's usually end of clock. Like if he truly has to, it's end of clock, and it just means we haven't created an advantage to that point. And now someone has to go try to make a play up against the shot clock, which is not a position of strength. So. Um, you know, that's why we want to play with pace. That's why we want to, you know, play with great pace inside the actions, gain advantages as early in the possession as possible, and then maintain those advantages. Um, and I thought, you know, this is an elite defense. This is the best defense in the league or one of them. So uh, that's why they're good. They're hard to crack. Um, we cracked them on some possessions. Certainly didn't crack them on enough. Um, didn't finish some of the plays uh, when we did. And, you know, that's how you end up losing the game. It did seem like you guys cracked them more often when Josh was out there and just given the way that he's able to play make and being the focal point probably on a lot of possessions tonight, what'd you make of the way that he was able to deal with probably more attention than being the primary playmaker and getting you into good stuff? Um, seemed like he got you into really good stuff uh, when he was out there. Yeah, I mean, we want to be a team where there's not like a primary playmaker where we're working together for the advantages, but I thought he um, was on the gas tonight and played with really good thrust, which is the way that you have to play against a defense like that. You know, it's just if you're slow inside the actions or slow with your decisions against their defense, you know, that's why they're good, you know. And so I thought he was on the gas tonight. It gave him a good chance to get downhill. He was able to find some plays there. Um, and those were our best possessions tonight when we played with that sort of force. Just thinking about him in the past, there were some times even against this team where he would get kind of stopped up at the elbow or, you know, slowed down. How big of a sign of growth is his trajectory to be able to be on the gas in this way that we've seen? Yeah, not just for him. It's the offense has evolved too, you know, because on a lot of those plays, you know, there's a screen or a slip or something that's creating the initial advantage, and then he's gassing it. So it's not only the individual growth, but it's the growth of our system and, you know, the rest of our players and him, you know, in unison to create more of those advantages.